So you want to learn how to animate with sprites? Well then you found the right tutorial series. I will try to explain in detail how to go about it. If you haven't seen the prologue video for this tutorial series, then go ahead and watch that first as it explains how this series will play out. In this first video of the first phase, I'll show you the basic tools and windows that are essential in Flash. Adobe Flash or Adobe Flash Professional is the program you're going to use for sprite animating. It's an awesome software. Definitely not cheap, but trust me, it's, it's worth it. And the version I'm using is the Mac version of Adobe Flash CS5. I recommend you use either CS5 or higher. However, most things that are going to be explained will probably also work for CS4, so it's up to you. And of course, the Windows version just works just the same. Besides all that, I don't think there is much else I can say right off the bat. Let's make a start. A long time ago, Macromedia acquired the rights to release a particular drawing application named Flash. And it was later purchased by Adobe Systems which currently releases Adobe Flash software that we know today. It allows to use and create vector graphics with a large number of tools and it comes with a programming language as well. There are of course many uses for such a platform and at the time it seemed to work well with sprites. Now what are sprites? You see when you play 2D games, old or new, what, what, what you're seeing on the screen, what, what moves on the screen, those are sprites. Those are called sprites. Uh, it's, it's, well, they are graphics. And there are people who took the time to extract those graphics, those sprites, making them available for many purposes, including animating. And it works so well with Adobe Flash. So if you want to animate with sprites, you have to understand how Flash works. Good, so this is what Flash looks like when you open it up. Right in the middle we have some suggestions, you can even create an iPhone app. But we are going to file and we are going to create a new Flash file. And in this case we are going to choose 2.0. Don't mind the 3.0 because that has something to do with ActionScript and that's not what I'm going to talk about. Just pick 2.0 and then you're fine. Good. So. You can immediately see there are different sections and different windows and I arranged them to my own liking. You can of course change that. Just pick your window like this and you can then drag them and then drop in wherever you like. Like color, I'm just putting it here. Now when you work with Flash, there are a lot of functions that you're going to utilize. And of course there are a number of windows that are going to be open, but not every window is important in my opinion. In, uh, in window, if you go to window, you can actually select and deselect what uh, windows you want to work with. Right, so now I'm going to quickly show you what windows I'm using. In this section, top left corner, I have two windows, color and swatches. In color, you can change the color for the filling and you can change the color for stroke. Now I will explain this later on when I explain uh, shapes and lines. Let me just say that uh, if you choose swatches, you can select from a palette of colors, but uh, that's not going to be necessary because this whole palette is inside the color window. Just click here or here and you have the whole palette inside this window. In the second section, just below, I have three windows, Align, Info and Transform. And with Align you can change the position of the object that you have selected. For instance, if I select this black ball, I can change its position. Put it in the center, this is the uh, horizontal center. The vertical center, I can put it on the edges as well. Now with info, if, if you have selected something, you get information about the size and the position, even the color, if you hover over it. And then with transform, you can change the size, you can rotate the object, it's not quite visible, but still, and you can even skew it, like this. Well, that's very, f that's good, it's all good and well, but uh, there are other tools to achieve the same result. I will, show to sh I will show them to you in a second. Then there's this little window that I placed here. I never use it, but it is to control the timeline, so it could be useful. The last section on the left side is the properties window and this is very important because it contains a lot of information about whatever you have selected. If nothing is selected then it shows information about the document like how many frames per second, what's the size of the stage and also the publish settings. 
If you select, for instance, this black ball, or I should rather say black disc, then it shows information about the black disc. If you select a frame on the timeline, then it shows information about the timeline. Now, the properties window is very important because you can actually change all these properties and that's why I think you're gonna use this window a lot. Next, we have this section which contains all the tools that you're going to use in Flash. They are very important and I'm going to explain them in a minute. Now comes the big one. Right here in the middle we have the stage and this is where you're going to put everything, all your symbols. And you can see there's a grey zone which is off screen so you're not going to see what's on the grey zone but everything that you put in the white zone here which is the actual stage, this is what you're going to see in the video, in the final flash video. Just below I have this section which contains the timeline, actions and motion editor. I never use motion editor so just forget it. When it comes to actions, this has something to do with the action script program language. So you can actually program inside a flash, but this is very complicated and I might mention it in a later video in phase 3 I think. But what is important is the timeline, it's crucial for animating. But in phase 1 we are not going to animate so I'm not going to further explain the timeline. Go check out phase 2, I'm sure there's a video for timeline. Last but not least we have the library. You can find everything inside your library. Everything that you have put into your stage you find in your library and even more. You can find movie clips, you can find graphics, those two are symbols. You can find music, you can find bitmap images. There are quite a, there's quite a number of things that you can find in your library. You can even create new things like new symbols, like this. And you can even create folders to organize all your symbols. You can select the symbol and drag him out of the library into your stage. And that's how easy it is. Now let's have a closer look at the basic tools that you're going to use. For demonstration I have here a sprite of Sonic, which I converted into a symbol. And right here we have Mario's head, which I've drawn. This is not a symbol right now. I've, I drew this right on the stage. The tool that you're going to use the most probably is the selection tool. There you have the keyboard shortcut V. And with this tool you can select anything that you have on your stage. If you want to select the symbol, it's very easy, just click on it, it gets this blue border and if you hold the selection tool then you can drag your symbol anywhere you want. It's very easy. Well, now when it comes to this, this is something I have drawn. So it's not a symbol and if you want, if you want to select it, well you can try to click on it but it's going to select the area. In this case it's these, this color. But if you want to select the whole shape then you just click somewhere and then you drag over it. That's how you select the whole thing. This is, a, this is a shape, this is a symbol. There's a big difference and I'm going to explain everything in the next video. Just underneath we have the sub selection tool and I never use this one. It's very similar to the selection tool when it comes to symbols but it's a bit different with shapes and we're just going to quickly show you what it looks like. If you click the mustache then it looks like this, you have all of these little squares and it, these squares allow you to change the form of the, of the uh, shape that you have selected. Well, it's useful in some cases, but when it comes to sprite animating, I never use it. But I will explain it further in the second or the third video. Next we have the free transform tool and this is quite important because you can do a lot with the free transform tool. It replaces the transform window that I presented just earlier. Now with the free transform tool you can select anything you want and you can drag and place it anywhere on the stage just like the selection tool. Now you can also change the size by clicking here in the corner or here or anywhere you want and now you can really change the way Sonic looks in terms of size. But uh, yeah it looks good but you can also do something like this and you don't want that. What you want to do is hold shift and then change the size but this time you're going to keep the proportions and that's the way you should change the size. Enough of altering the size, how about rotating the symbol? For that you go just a little bit outside of the corner, of one of the corners and then you see that your cursor changes into the symbol and this indicates that you can rotate the symbol. Now then here you go, click and then just rotate very easily. Nice. Now if you hold shift, 
and you rotate, then you're, you're going to rotate the object, but always in 45 degrees increments. This can be very useful in my opinion. One more thing, instead of going to the corner, or one of the corners, you can hover over the rest of the border, and then you see this little thing appear. This means you can screw your image, I don't know how to pronounce it, but you can do this kind of uh, alteration. Wait a minute, what about Mario's head? I mean, it's a shape, but every everything that I've showed you with the symbol, you can also do with the shape. So you can change the size, you can also rotate it, and also skew it. The only difference is you can also do this kind of alteration. Hold CMD, or control, I think, and then you do this. Or hold shift and CMD, and you can do it on both sides, and you get this kind of physical contraction, I don't know. It's very weird, I never use it, but I, sh I thought I should mention it. Now go back to the same icon and then you can click and hold, which allows you to select the gradient transform tool. Now I will explain what it does in the video about shapes and lines. Now let's speed up a little bit. The next thing is the 3D rotation tool. Now this has to do with more advanced animating and I don't explain it here. But uh, what may be useful is the lasso tool, which allows you to select anything that is inside of the form that you're drawing, like this, so I can select both very easily with the lasso tool. Alright, next we have the pen tool, and the pen tool is very useful for vector drawings. I will explain everything about vector drawing in a later video. Very important, however, is the text tool. The text tool allows you to create simple text inside of Flash, and you can, of course, uh, edit this with the uh, properties window. You can change the position, the letter spacing, the size of the letters. You have a whole text editing software inside this window, so to speak. Now, very quickly, the line tool, the rectangle tool, the pencil tool, and the brush tool, those four symbols, I will explain them in the later video. Usually, you don't need them for sprite animating, but sometimes you have to use them. So it's uh, it's worth mentioning, but not in this video, in a later video. Alright, let's finish this. The deco tool, I never use this one. And I also don't use the bone tool, but I think it can be useful in some instances. I will ex try I will try to explain it in a more in a more advanced video. Now the paint bucket tool is useful to actually change the color. Let's for instance change Mario's uh, hat, the color of his hat. Yeah, that's his skin color. And you can also select a certain color with the eyedropper tool. Let's for instance choose Mario's mustache. Now we have brown, so it's very dark brown. And we have also the eraser tool to actually erase a certain shape like this. Yeah, we, want, we don't want that, so let's go back. And then we finally have the hand tool to, to move the stage by just clicking it. And then we have the uh, zoom tool which allows you to zoom in and also zoom out by holding by holding alt i think yes that's correct all right all right that was very quick i know i'm sorry but i don't want these videos to be very long and don't worry i will re-explain those tool in later videos because uh, i will always have to use uh, the selection tool the the free transform tool, the bucket tool, and other tools. And I will each time go further into detail on how to use these tools properly. Don't So don't worry. Good, so that's all I had to say about sprite animating in this first tutorial video. But I haven't really talked about sprites now, have I? Well, let me just quickly fix that. I'm going to give you some links, some very important uh, websites where you can find sprites because later on you have to import your sprites into Flash. Now, the, probably the most famous one is the Spriters Resource. It has all possible sprites you can imagine from, from arcade games, GameCube, Game Boy, SNES, NES, Nintendo 64, Genesis. It, it, there is practically, I, I think there's almost everything on the Spriters Resource and uh, it's the most important one on the internet, in my opinion. There's also the Sprite Database, which I think is a very, very good website for sprites. It has a great archive with many different systems, and I think this is a good one. And um, there are, of course, a lot of other sprite archives on the internet. I can't show them all to you. I, I'm not even aware of all of them. 
but there was one archive I was very fond of. It was the Mystical Forest Zone. It had a lot of Sonic sprites. Yeah, it's, it's uh, only Sonic sprites, but it was a, a large library of Sonic sprites of custom made and original. But unfortunately, it has been shut down, and the only way to access this website is via a specific link. Now, I will provide this link in the description. <clears throat> it's actually not the real site, it's sort of a uh, mirroring, I don't know, it's not really the site, but you can still access the sprites and you can down download them just like uh, before. So, this will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching the first episode of my tutorial series about sprite animating. Now I know there are a few things that I need to improve, you know, like my voiceover and how I talk and how I describe things. But don't worry, I will, I will work on that and uh, you get to see better videos in the future. Besides that, if you have any more questions, then just leave, leave a comment. And then in the next video I will answer some uh, questions that are related to what I've explained in this first episode. And in the next episode I will explain how to import sprites and how to work with them because after all this is a sprite animating tutorial so we have to actually work with sprites. For the next episode you can click the annotation just on the right and if you want to watch the prologue video which is quite essential uh, then uh, click the, the annotation on the left side. So that's pretty much all for the first episode. Thank you for watching again and see you soon in the next episode. Have fun, take care, ciao.